The Conjuring 2. Is the sequel to one of the best horror movies in recent years and I'm glad to say it doesn't disappoint. Here's looking at you, Independence Day re-shitted. Director James Wan returns and remains horror heavyweight champion. I mean, this man directed Insidious and Insidious Chapter 2, the first Conjuring movie, the first Saw, Jesus. Oh, and Furious 7. How did that get in there? And now he knocks it out of the park again with an unnerving, creepy picture based on a true story uh, about yet another Ed and Lorraine Warren haunting case, Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga reclaiming their roles as the paranormal investigators. The action takes place six years after the events from the first one, and this time the couple travel to London where a young girl starts showing signs of demonic possession which threatens not only her entire family, but themselves as well. If you're familiar with James Wan's previous projects, you'll come to expect some things, like numerous tracking shots with the camera following one or more members of the family while going through walls or windows, good suspense, great suspense building, again, through the camera movement and scene editing, as well as sound editing and mixing, with a few jump scares, but not the fake bullshit kind you find in crappy money-making remakes or spin-offs. The jump scares in this movie are legit, genuinely scary tension breakers that leave you satisfied at the end of each scene. Let's call them happy endings. <laughs> Again, unlike those other ones that like to jerk you around, <laughs> or even worse, that don't have the build-up or momentum required and they make you prematurely <laughs> um, lose it all with a stupid cat jumping from a fucking dumpster three times in one movie or some shit like that. So the tension is there, the creepy imagery is there for sure, the character building is well done, you understand these people and their struggle, you root for them and understand their pain, especially the little girl in the movie, Madison Wolf who managed a great performance, as did the entire cast. James Wan really either knows how to pick them or knows how to direct and capture their, their facial expressions, or both, because they added a lot to this picture. The need to see more of the primary demon, the star, the MVP, I think they could have used him more. My opinion. And one more nitpicking thing is that although this movie is 2 hours and 14 minutes long without any dull moments, I walked out feeling the need... the need for speed. No. <laughs> My second gripe is that some of these people witness some really crazy impossible shit that cannot be explained and they're still not convinced it's real. They think everything's staged. I mean, I don't know what happened in real life in that house back in the 70s, but if it went down like it's portrayed in this movie, even Chuck Norris would pee his pants. And, and that would mean a huge tidal wave of piss or whatever. Chuck Norris jokes. I only have a couple of issues, one being that I would have preferred a tad more small, subtle things to happen before the big signs of paranormal activity. All in all, I found it to be a 9 out of 10 and I strongly recommend seeing this movie in theaters, hopefully without any annoying idiots shouting and narrating everything they see, like retards telling a bedtime story to imaginary children. Respect everyone else's movie-going experience and stop showing off in front of your friends or girlfriends or boyfriends or wives or husbands or mothers or dogs. I saw it in a packed theater with two-thirds of the seats occupied by teenagers, 13, 14, 16 years old maybe, in big groups and they almost didn't make one disturbing sound during its runtime, so that's another clue to this being a well-made horror movie, or kids these days having more common sense than a lot of adults. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to subscribe if you want more of me inside of you. Or homes, computers, screens,